which Mrs. Toastmaster, <laughs> fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests. Mm -hmm. This is my last speech. I have been a part of Toastmasters for four years now. Sophomore year, I was vice president of membership. Junior year, I was president. This year, I started off as vice president of education, basically was the president at the same time. And over the semester, over the break, I became president once again. In four years, I have seen some amazing speeches, much like Lane's today. I've also seen some atrocious things where I couldn't wait for that red flag to show. <laughs> We've all seen some of those. In four years, I have met some fantastic people with amazing stories and people I'm going to be friends with for years to come. And I've met some people to where I couldn't wait until they either quit, until they graduated, <laughs> or until I graduated. <laughs> it happens. All in all, in four years, I've learned a whole lot. Not just in Toastmasters, but at UT in general. And in a true conclusive fashion, I figured I'd share some of those key things I've learned with y'all, also sticking to the rule of three I use in almost every single speech I give. And I'll warn you now, it's not as lighthearted as my typical speeches. I'm actually going to try the serious thing out, see how that works for me. But I'm going to be as open as I can with you guys, hopefully encourage you at the same time, and hopefully even leave some of y'all convicted thinking of ways to maybe change the way you do some things. So without further ado, some of the things I've learned. And the first thing is something I've struggled with for many years. I'm really starting to figure it out, overcome it, and something I'm sure a lot of us here struggle with. It's hard to hear, but I'm just going to throw it out here. This life is not about you. What do I mean by that? A lot of us get in the framework, just start thinking over and over, fall into the habit where we think, what are my goals? What are my aspirations? What are my plans? How does this relate to me? How does this pertain to me? What about me? What about me? What about me? And I'll tell you right now, that kind of framework and just focusing on your own career goals, whatever goals they may be, that's going to leave you pretty empty and pretty devastated. It's happened to me, and uh, an unfortunate example is that it happened to my dad. In four years, I've I realized I've never really brought up my dad. It's not, I don't have big daddy issues, anything like that. Dad and I are actually real close, and I love my dad. But he's the kind of guy who took his career way too seriously. For the past 18, 20 years, now he's an entrepreneur. He's been working on one basic project, one main project while doing things on the side to keep income coming in. And this thing has been basically the story of my life. He created this product around the time I was just a baby. And for the past 18, 20 years, it's been almost there. Just that entrepreneur is just obsessed with this thing. And while I do respect him for sticking to it so much, committing to the idea, putting so much time, so many resources, so many sacrifices into it, it came at a huge price point. His relationship with my mom took a huge hit. They got divorced back in 06. His relationship with myself and my brother definitely was impacted. And even today, uh, my brother and I are still kind of shaken up about it. And his relationship was with his own dad, his own brother, his own sisters, they took a hit. All because he was just focused on what were his goals. But I encourage you guys today, if your career goals, your educational aspirations, whatever they may be, if that's coming before your family, your potential spouse, your potential kids, most of us are going to have those. And dare I say, in a public university, God, I went there. Dare I say that? those career goals come before that, maybe it's rethink some things. Second big thing that I learned, sometimes in life, and I learned this a lot in Toastmasters, you just have to suck it up. It's not always about doing what's easy, about doing what's fun. Sometimes you have to do what's not even required of you, you have to go the extra step. And a big example of this is my presidency this past year. I'll tell you right now, I didn't want to do it at all. <laughs> I was essentially forced into it uh, last semester, the previous president surprised me in the last month saying, hey, I'm actually not going to be here next year. It's all up to you. Surprise. There's a reason I didn't run for president last year. I didn't want to be president. I really wanted to be vice president of education. I liked the responsibilities there. It was cozy. And I didn't really enjoy being president last year. I, for the record, I have enjoyed it a lot more this year. But with this, when the situation came, when Alia told me that you know, I'm not going to be here next year, now, I figured I had three options. Y'all know the main one, the one I chose. I was president this past semester. The other ones, I could have said, hell no, I'm not doing that. I'll have one of the officers, they, they can figure it out. 
But I know none of them really wanted to be president, did y'all? No? No? Yeah, I never got responses to that email. <laughs> and the other option would be to do what a lot of past officers have done and just bail. A lot of people have done that in the past. It sucks. And those were the easier options and would have been a lot more fun for me. And I'll tell you, I don't like when people give me more responsibility. But, you know, I'm trying, I hope I don't sound cocky, but had I not, like, stepped up, had I not taken that initiative, this club would not be in a great state right now. Am I saying this club has depended a lot on me in the past? Hell yes, I am. I work my ass off for you guys. <laughs> but had I not stepped up, it would have been a bad thing. So I really had to put my own interests aside, my own efforts, my own wants aside, and do what was best for the rest of the club. Officers, that's a big word for you guys. So y'all remember that. Where are y'all? I just scattered around. Hello. And finally, a big lesson that I learned in four years. It's huge. It, You've probably heard it before, but I've really had to teach it to myself, especially this year. Happiness is a choice. It's not something that just happens. It's not something that a feeling is a choice. Uh, Andrew, uh, Andrew asked me a few weeks ago, when I come here, why am I always in such a good mood? I'm always kind of bubbly. It looks like I've had a few shots of espresso. I assure you I'm not addicted to caffeine. I hit speed every now and then. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm not a drug addict. <laughs> But honestly, I make a choice to be in a good mood. And you know, the answer I told him has a lot to do with it, God. I'm a, I guess, really spiritual guy, great relationship with God. It's a big part of my life. But quite simply, I have to make this choice every day. And a great example has been this year. Um, I just used to feel good. I don't know if y'all realize this, but this has been probably the worst year of my life. Uh, the month of February was the absolute worst period in my life. I think I explained a little bit to Paulina before. And in the first weekend, first week alone in February, my girlfriend and I of two years and two months broke up. Not an easy thing. Three days, or a day later, my car breaks down. That's a $400 expense. Two days after that, my uncle passes away. And a day after that, my sister-in-law, after being pregnant for two and a half months, had a miscarriage. All that in a week. Few more days pass by, I get rejected by the job I've been wanting a long time. I've been, I didn't do any interviews this last semester because I was focused on this job. They said no. Dealt with other rejections from other companies, dealt with struggling grades here and there. Not really, those were okay actually. But just a lot of crap hit me at once. And I'll be honest, at first it knocked me on my ass. Dealing with all that stuff, it's not easy. I'm sure everyone in here has been in that situation where you're just thinking, Holy crap, how am I going to get out of this? And I was certainly being mopey for a while. Just, you know, I cried in my bedroom a lot. I don't care. I'll be honest. I dealt with some crap. <laughs> but after a while, man, I got tired of that. It's not fun being depressed. It's not fun being that negative guy. It's not fun having to whine to your roommates and drag people down with you. I don't like being that guy. I don't think anyone really likes being that guy. So I had to just decide, not become, but decide to really accept the situation, learn from it. I've learned a lot from all that crap. And really make the changes necessary to make my life better. And who here right now, who's going through like maybe some, who's going through some shit right now? They want this kind of tough stuff going on? Jeez. So bad for it. Y'all <laughs> easy lives. My goodness. Man, liars. <laughs> Tough stuff will happen. I promise you guys, especially <laughs> as you get older. And when that stuff comes, I encourage you guys, once that comes, just take a few steps back and just analyze your life in general. I guarantee you the blessings you have in your life totally outweigh those problems. I was thinking about this a lot, and everyone in here, we are all just extremely fortunate people. We all have wonderful lives. We've got our little things here and there. Every one of you is smart, they'll attend a great university. I know all of y'all are pretty driven, determined individuals. Other, otherwise, you're going to be part of this stupid organization called Toastmasters. <laughs> what the hell was that? Ever get that question? Uh, we make toast. Hmm? Yeah, we make toast. My name. We, we make a lot of toast. Good toast. I bring the butter. <laughs> but, but once that stuff comes, just, just take the time to really weigh the 
the blessings in your life and the little problems, I guarantee you, you'll realize all that you have to be thankful for. So in conclusion, I just want to say, yeah, we're running over time, just like always. <laughs> I want to say, every single meeting, I tend to end it with a, love you guys, see ya, bye. Something along those lines. I know a lot of you are probably thinking, why the hell does he say that? He is one weird kid. The truth is, I do love you guys. I respect all of you so much. I know everyone in here is a bright person. All of y'all are driven. Y'all are committed to making yourselves better. That's awesome. A lot of people at the school suck. There are a lot of crappy people here. You know it. You definitely know it. I know all of you guys are all just, just bright dudes and dudettes. <laughs> and so... I wanted to thank you guys very, very much for letting me be your president for two years. I have genuinely appreciated and loved getting to know all of y'all. I will miss you guys, and I expect only great things next year, not just of the club, but individually as well. Thank you guys very, very much for four awesome years. None of y'all have really been here for four years, but I do appreciate everything. I encourage you guys. Thank you again, Mr. Toastmaster.